What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 26 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Karl Franz campaign. So as we saw last time, Sylvania has well and truly become an imperial province, suffering a random attack from a pile of greenskins, as it did. Fortunately, the imperial state troops at Waldenhof did manage to hold off the orc tide and see the army off without too much trouble. We will, I'm sure, be seeing the orcs of Azag again, however, as it looks like they're perfectly willing to bypass Karakadrin in order to annoy us. Oh, player bias. That, uh, well, it does make for fun battles, so, you know, can't complain too much about it. It's annoying in some ways, but it's also fun in others, so I guess it is a, uh, it's a balancing act. Now, the first thing that we're going to do, well, is first, first thing we're going to do is actually attack Quark Manripper, but uh, we're going to head up Carl into the mountains here, and we're going to burn Azag's territories to the ground. Well, we're actually going to occupy them, but, uh... Yeah, we don't want these guys to get too strong, and they're just going to keep coming, so... And we have to counteract that. Plus, we gotta get revenge for them, a daring to attack Waldenhof as well. Anyway, first thing, Korok Manripper. Let's declare war on you. Let's attack you. It's a garbage little stack full of Ungor, so we should be able to just auto-resolve it. Plus, he's in a raiding stance as well, so... yeah. Oh! When you retreat, you leave rating stance. Okay, that's kind of interesting. I hadn't realized that. Yeah, we're auto-resolving this. I just wanted to check what our buffs were. There's an ab They had absolutely no chance. Not even... Yeah, even the auto-resolve barely hurt us here, and it also barely gave us any kind of reward, but you know. Alrighty, well, that's good. We got to level up on somebody. Faction destroyed Shadow Gore Warhead, and ooh, yes, the Sunmaker. That is definitely going to have to go into Carl's army. Finally have access to a Hellstorm rocket battery, and they're just so fun. And the Black Lines as well, the War Wagons with Hellblasters, quite a good uh, regiment of renown. And I guess this is going to go to our mobile army. It'll power them up, plus it'll enable them to destroy towers, should the need come down to it. Uh, Carl, you're going to move into our own territory rather than Ostermark's, because that's the only way that you can actually... Uh, uh, that you can actually... get these units. Okay, I just wanted to double check. Then, I guess what we'll need to do is we'll need to actually transfer a unit from Carl's army so that he can get the Sunmaker, which I guess is going to have to be the Silver Bullets. Carl isn't super reliant on the handgunners in this particular uh, army, and we have plenty of other armies that are going to be all gunpowder, so yeah. Uh, you guys, let's have you transfer those troops, shall we? Let's have you go here. Wait. What does the Emperor bid? Hmm. We can't transfer. Emperor. Well, I guess we could summon it next turn. We don't have to do it right now. Alrighty, so let's do this. You're gonna go here, and then we're going to, let's say, give your troops to Mr. Leonard Holtz here. Honestly, it doesn't really matter who. Into the wild. You're actually cheaper. If we, We're going to delete this army anyway, but on the other Falling hand, back. you have the discipline. Tra no, you have basic training. Which does buff up halberdiers and spears, I guess, which there is piles Postman of in this General. army. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. And uh, you're gonna go here, to and you're gonna transfer real quick. We march. Like so. And we're gonna delete Scout you, leader. my friend. And then Leonard, you're just going to follow yes. Carl along. Also, down. before I forget, we were going to summon a unit of Imperial Knights here, but we don't need to anymore. I just saw that this is at six turns away, which means we can just summon them directly, or rather than summon the Imperial Knights or recruit the Imperial Knights, and then replace them. There's no need to do it like that. You're going to go to Castle Drakenhof for now, and we're probably going to start recruiting the Knight's Panther. Maybe this turn, maybe next turn, depending on whether we need to spend the money elsewhere. Wolfram Custerman, you are going to attack Migdal von Galbarax. We're going to be fighting some Karak Hearn Dwarfs shortly. So let's move you up here. Preparing everybody for a fight, basically. Carl against the Orcs, Wolfram against the Dwarfs, and Peter against the Skaven, depending on if they're at Bilbali or... South. Looks like Bilbali's actually empty. There's no Skaven corruption here. Well, let's take it over while we're at it, though. Alrighty, and yes, colonize it. Whether we keep yes. it or not is... Hmm. 
I'm not sure yet. Yeah, it'll probably be a pretty decent province, but on the other hand, there's a good reason to trade it to Carcassonne. We'll see if they lose Mantenas or not. If they don't, then we'll just trade it to them. But if they do, we'll take Montenas for ourselves. I just figure that if these guys remain reasonably powerful, then they can at least help us out and maybe attack Nakari periodically, because he's going to keep annoying us as well. Alrighty, anyway, you guys find some elves for us. There we go. And Gregor. We were going to send you out to these islands, so I guess that's still going to be the case. Mmm, yeah. This is the remnants of Bellacor's army. Or actually, no, it's a separate army. Because they're all at full HP. But it's a 13 out of 20 stack. There's no way that they attack those. Even if it is a relatively weak state troop army, there's still no way that they even try. They would fail. So, that's fine. Even in March stance. And I believe that's it for pretty much all the moves. Oh, Rupert uh, Putkamer, let's have you try to kill Mr. Ashik One Finger here. Hey, there you go. Nice job, buddy. Yes. Finally. You're paying for yourself. I don't know why I said finally, considering that was his first try. Uh, but, uh, yeah. And I believe that's it. Alrighty, let's spend some cash on getting a few upgrades, or a few uh, buildings built, and then let's end the turn. Let's get some battles in here. Alright, Northern Sylvania, you are going to need the industry building. Massive Forkal, we're holding off on you. And Griffin Wood, yes, industry. Blackwater. Zufbar, yes, and Karug Dromar, most definitely, yes. Farms and industry for you as well. And you know what? We can start collecting income. Yes, it's minus 10, but Confederation's done in a turn, which means we no longer need it. Uh, build Bali. We are going to hold off on doing anything with right now. Same with Karak Asgaraz. Uh, but we can collect income here at the Northern Grey Mountains. And we can get the town upgraded, I guess. A little bit on the expensive side, but yeah, it's fine. I mean, we could also do this next turn, but these these things take a long time to upgrade. And we might as well get the additional dies. And once this is upgraded, we can build the uh, Taylor's Guilds here as well. So yeah, it works. And we're up to nearly 12k per turn, which is quite nice that we still need money for more recruitment. Uh, speaking of recruitment, there is one other thing that we want to do right now, which is we now have access to battle wizards. We're also going to have to figure out who's going to go into what army. We have the Celestial Wizard in Carl's, which means other types of uh, wizards are probably going to have to be in other armies. We want one of every wizard at the very least before we start duplicating. Obviously, Fire Army is going to get the Bright Wizard, but everything else is up for grabs. We could also... I mean, the Jade Wizard would be quite good in Carl's army as well, because it could heal up Carl personally. Though he doesn't, I guess, have too many other single entities or low entity units that would really benefit from all the healing. On the other hand, Dwellers Below is always quite powerful. Flesh to Stone, I don't know, but Theon's been with him for so long. I'll have to think about this. Really, we should just put this in an army that has a bunch of uh, steam tanks and stuff to somehow use the lore to heal steam tanks. But anyway, I guess there's no mechanical trade in this game. Mm, hello, there's a noble. All right, we'll start with you. And the reason I want this guy is, well, first of all, let's take away his horse. Uh, this guy, noble, is useful so that we can always come back and boost income. But for now, we're going to use him to steal tech and get our research up. Because, obviously, the research is currently uh, quite problematic. Do we want boost income or do we want wound in case... You know what? No, we want wound. We will get boost income, but he'll level up doing this first. And then he'll return to Altdorf once he's uh, stolen enough tech. Though that'll be a long ways away, I'm sure. At least he'll still have a use once we've completed all of our research. Alrighty. Preparing for the future here. Uh, everything else looks good to me. We have no more money remaining. I guess we'll wait a turn to start recruiting the Knight's Panther, but that's fine as well. They're quite expensive as well, so... Yeah. Alright. Is it time? And then, yeah, we have some big expenditures next turn as well on these two, but... Oh, well, not a big deal. Uh, Garrison Lord not moved and assigned skill points, building upgrades available. Nope, let's end the turn. We did diplomacy last time, so let's do the diplomacy of attacking things this turn.
All right, anything interesting? Karaza Karak, no Crooked Moon, Bone Rattlers, Munchas, and Karakarazak. Yeah, you stay there, buddy. You stay there. Stay there and give Carl a good fight, won't you? Already down to 130 factions, not so bad. And hello, what do we have here? Confederation offered. Aha, so it gets offered immediately as soon as the uh, Confederation penalty ends. Fair enough. Uh, let's give this a quick read, as I don't think we've seen Ostermark before, because they died. A somber, bleak land to the east. Ostermark has long been an avenue into the Empire for invaders, as well as Imperial armies on the march north or into the World's Edge Mountains. Which is what we're doing. Oh, what a coinkydink. Uh, being so close to Kislev, Ostermarkers are sometimes accused of sharing the Kislevites' binge-drinking customs. Yeah, fair enough, but so does the rest of the Empire. Then the dwarfs. <laughs> Alrighty, assert independence. Uh, yeah. We're up to 15 Imperial Authority. Yeah, we're obviously free to take the uh, to take the next good offer, which hopefully will be Soland or Sterland. They will obey. Carl. All right, how do we do this? First of all, you need the yes, Sunmaker. So we're going to transfer your Silver Bullets away. I mean, what else would we transfer away? One of the problems with the Halberdiers, and you know what? Maybe one of the Halberdiers instead. It's gonna be a while before they get replaced with the demi grips. I think Carl has to be level 30 to unlock the Royal Altdorf Griffite, so let's do one. The uh, the Reichsguard do a fairly decent job of protecting our flanks from any uh, cavalry anyway. And I feel like we'll get more mileage out of the Silver Bullets right now. We'll transfer them eventually anyway to our gunnery army, um, but they're still quite useful. So, one of the Halberdiers. Oh, ironically, we have uh, two here instead of one. I, I built an extra one here, didn't I? <laughs> uh, oh well. Uh, you. Get that Sunmaker. There we go. Power of the Sun in the palm of our hands now. Alrighty, you are going to March Stance all the way up here. It's not like you're afraid of uh, Muncha attacking you. And I guess Leonard Holtz can follow you. Mmm, wait. Or can he? Orc. Can he? You guys. You guys are here now, aren't you? We're gonna have to permanently watch this place. They've already attacked us once and they're probably gonna do so again. Alrighty, Nud, let's send you to Eshin. And oh, you can build Flagellants now, can't you? Yes, very nice. Alright, well, you can do Knight's Panther afterward, but for now. Uh, you know what? Let's be careful about that. Uh, we'll do this in a second. I just want to see what other things we need to upgrade first. Don't want to go overboard on the expenditures, especially as Wolfram is fairly far away. And speaking of Wolfram, oh, look at that. Uh, we'll do that in a second. We need to figure out what to do with you. So the problem is five trolls. These guys would probably have a difficult time dealing with that number of trolls. Bad. Now we could send Leonard Holtz up to help Carl. But does Carl really need it? The mortars would help in the sieges at Karakraziak, for example. On the other hand, this army could be very well off to defend against Snazdrog. Yeah, you know what? Let's keep him at Waldenhof. It'll it's the safer the option. It's a march stance, you I guess. It is for the best. At least this way, I'm not entirely sure what this guy could possibly do. He's probably then not going to attack Waldenhof, because this army's too big. He might still try Eshin though. Actually, speaking of Eshin, let's get that wine up and running. And we no longer need this, because we'll replace it with more industry, and I guess we probably want to do the same thing here. We gotta make more monies. Alrighty, the rest looks good to me. Now, let's keep moving. Unfortunate that Carl couldn't reach Karakraziak. Is there anywhere that we can actually get a fight right now? I... well, maybe the island? What kind of island is this? Remnants of Battle. I don't remember if that's a fighty one or a non-fighty one. Oh, and the island is gone. This guy took it. That's a non-fighty one. Alright, he fell cargo for you, my friend. Uh, Wax-sealed rations, upkeep reduction. Fairly low on this army, because it's a very cheap army, but nonetheless... We could sail up and start annoying the scaling, though we're currently not at war with them and there's no real need. Uh, what about... I was, about, I was gonna say send you to sea to find some islands, but there's nothing here. I guess the AI's taking them out. Oh, wait, there's one right there. <laughs> Almost blended in. Thank you, Nakari actually helped out. If it wasn't for the uh, corrupted territory, I probably wouldn't have noticed that. Like, it would have really blended in with something like this. 
And that's it? Really? Okay, there's another island right there. Yeah, alright, fine. We're going this way, then. We're gonna have to defend against the Kari anyway, so yeah, this is the way we go. Uh, you can stay at Fort Berg Bray because of the... You know, just enter the fort yourself. Uh, because of the state troop levy. Nice and a little bit of extra money because you're uh, you're gonna be garrison. Also, you guys find us Aetane, would you? And Bordelow, you need an upgrade. Yes, walls, yes, yeah, we do need to spend money this turn. And a yes to the Morso Valley vineyards. Hello. Now that you All right, here. we have Aetane. They are not willing to trade as yet. We could probably declare war on some factions. We probably don't want to be fighting Everest like they are. Although it would make them happier with us. I mm, still think we should probably avoid it. We don't want to declare war on the Dreadfleet because they'll start annoying our coastline. They're probably going to do so anyway, but I guess we're going to have to wait on, on this. And in fact, uh, other than the quest here... And we don't need to do anything. Muncha, hello. Carl was going to attack you anyway. Well, well, well. Isn't that just lovely? And now we could what attack Migdal von Galbarak, but it actually looks like our friend has killed the dwarfs there. And the garrison's pretty weak. You know what? We're going to let him do it. Let's move down to Akendorf instead. It's a more critical territory to have. Uh, never mind. <laughs> wow, Solon. Solon's doing really quite good, aren't they? You got all these armies, and Balthazar Gelt's army isn't even here. Probably moving around down here somewhere. Alright, honestly, if they can prevent us from even declaring war on Karakurn, that would be preferable. We'll see. If they manage to take these, we're just going to let them. We're going to confederate them eventually anyway, and we might as well let them develop them themselves, rather than having to uh, rather than having to pay for it. Alrighty, Marcus Huss, you are moving down to Peter's oh, army. Good on you. Eckhart, our new tech thief. And I'm going to rename him tech thief right now, because I'll forget. Well, I won't forget, because he's our cur currently our only wizard, but the more agents you have, the uh, more confusing it's going to get. Alright, good. And up to Bellacore you go. Hmm. I wonder if this army is going to come down to our now. I doubt it though, There's a... it's going to be too difficult for them to take that. Alrighty, everything else looks good to me. Peter, it's your turn to move. And I guess... Hmm... Well, we want to go down to Magritta. What's the cost of the... Oh, you got to be kidding me, we're 70 gold short. Uh, did we cancel all those flagellants? Yes, we did. How do we get 70 gold right now? If nobody wants to do any treaties. Because if we want to move command, yeah, I guess the only thing we can do is cancel something. Walls? Probably not. Let's cancel briefly the Morso Valley Orchards, because they build very quickly anyway. Like so. And then Peter, and we're going to delete one of your free companies. And we're getting at you. Black Lines War Wagons. I'm excited to try that and the Sunmaker out. We got some nice uh, new units to test. Alright, you. Go into encamp stance. Head down to Magritta, please. Okay. Like so. And you also have a level up. You know what? Let's get you the level up. Uh, let us get you... Uh, let's see, we could do Rally and Sharpshooter, but nobody other than the Regiments of Renan would benefit from it. Though it is still a fairly decent buff. The other option would be to get the cooldown on the Arrow Vakshi, his uh, fire arrow. And sure and true. Yeah, let's get sure and true. It is an aura buff that gives us reload skill and a little bit of extra damage on all of our ranged units nearby. Which, you know, benefits basically anybody in this army. Certainly makes sense. Alright, and let's hope we can take Magritta next turn. Uh, how long do we have the buff for still? Five turns? Alright, fair enough. Alrighty, let's see. Anything else? We spent our money, such as it is. I guess we could double check whether there's any industry upgrades to make. For example, at Castle Bastun. And now we're good. Alrighty, with that we can end the turn and finally head into a battle. A little bit of an admin-heavy first portion of the episode, the but it does happen. Let's get you stand your ground, Carl, as well, before I forget. And let's get you, Mr. Warrior Priest your... I guess it'll be Safeguard and Impassion. Alright, well, Bring me to easy enough. Hand. Skip, skip, and then the turn.
Hey, we get supervisor for Carl. That's always nice. That'll mean an extra, I don't remember how much, uh, movement range. 5%. Very nice to stack on. Especially your main army. I'm a little bit jealous of... Oh, hello. Zok One Finger. Where are you going? Hmm. He's not at war with Ostermark, I don't think, because Ostermark just got revived, so they wouldn't be at war with anybody. Probably gonna try to move around and annoy us, but I don't think we can do anything about that right now. Oh, well. Uh, what do we have here? Empire means Empire. Oh, we've had that one before. We're just going to once again lobby against Decrees, mostly because we need a lot of cash right now. So, yeah, let's spend the Prestige instead. Like, so, Ivress destroyed. Oh, damn, I should have declared war on them. Oh, well. Well, how are we to know? Uh, the you. The Karakrasiak no you go. No, that actually doesn't take all of your uh, movement range. Could have actually had Leonard Holtz take it and then allowed you to move further, but it's okay. Now, I'm sure there's admin to do, but we're going to start off uh, by getting our first fight and trying out that Sunmaker. Oh, I'm excited. Hellstorm rocket batteries are just so fun. Alrighty, here we go. The Hellstorm's getting ready to fire. Looks like they're gonna get a first volley up right into the middle of the enemy. You didn't even miss your first volley. Well done, and here comes uh, the second follow-up on that. Oh, I can't... <laughs> Uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of this throughout the campaign, and, uh, well, I, for one, am going to enjoy it every single time. you got to love these artillery pieces. Anyway, the Sunmaker is going to just bombard the enemy while they move towards us, and the uh, Hammer of the Witch is going to do some work as well. Specifically, it's going to target the single unit of trolls that's moving up. Looks like it's been knocking them down, not killing them by, look, by the looks of it, but I'm sure... Wait, these guys are... Yeah, they're getting back up. Oh, but that's okay. Sunmaker already very much damaged a couple of units, and as the enemy blobs up more, it'll damage them more as well. The enemy is sending all of its cav out on this flank, but that's okay. We can meet them in battle with the Reichsguard who are moving to counter them. And as for our setup here, pretty simple. We have our uh, Imperial Foot who are out in the center with our single unit, uh, or single unit, our uh, uh, Warrior Priest out in the center where the gunners can also gun through behind them our, our uh, bordermen, which can obviously go for arcing shots over all these troops. On the flanks, we have our great swords in very large piles, and then a unit of uh, halberdiers directly behind them, all of which are protecting the... Uh, uh, the artillery, and we have one unit of Reichsguard held here in reserve, uh, just in case. A oh, nice little dwarf fort out here. Anyway, Carl is going to move forward already. He is going to try to distract uh, the enemy boar boys and hopefully prevent them from charging our Reichsguard. Stop them in place, allow the Reichsguard to charge. There we go. Looks like that'll work out decently, and there's a bit of a cav battle. Finally. Don't, or haven't had, I should say, a lot of these yet, but I'm sure we'll be getting a lot more of them in the future. Carl is also not afraid of a few boar boys, having taken on a dragon and a malevolent tree man at the same time. And some gobos are going to move in, and honestly, that's a terrible idea, because he's just going to mince them without too much trouble. In addition to that, it looks like the enemy army is getting closer. The trolls are not, however, as the Hammer of the Witches has done enough damage to them to uh, force them to rout. It's only killed four, but at the very least with them routing, it doesn't really matter how many it's killed so far. Let's uh, also double check, I just want to see what we got on the Hammer of the Witches. Sunmaker's got 200 kills already, and 33k damage. Ah, oh, Hellstorms. So great, and there we go, the Bordermen gonna add their own splash damage to the fray. You gotta love Imperial Armies, they're just so fun. All of the gunpowder units and the grenades and the rockets, beautiful. Can't wait to mix a few other uh, different types of factions, gunpowder units in the various armies. Not this one, mind you, but this one looks like it works pretty darn well already. 
Alrighty, and looks like the enemy is blobbing up more. Well, that's just more targets for the bordermen to attack. Over on the flanks, it looks like our Reichsguard have already defeated by and large all of the enemy cavalry, which are trying to run away, though they will probably come back. And the Reichsguard are now just stuck killing forest goblins and orc biggins as well, which probably won't be all that tough either. Especially with Carl leading them and buffing them up by giving them standard ground. Alrighty, and as soon as these guys are off, Carl can go hunt down the enemy lord, but it looks like the battle will in fact be decided on the front line. Go figure. There we go, just as those orcs move in, they lose half their number to the bordermen. Absolutely disgusting. Our artillery and our range units continue to fire. Also, our, our uh, let's say wolf priest for a second there. Our warrior priest fighting in the front as well. Ooh, looks like a stray shot from our... Uh, from our Sunmaker hit the Imperial foot. Looks like one of them might have died to that. Whoa, 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 Sunmaker. <laughs> Be careful, man. Come on now. Yeah, okay, it looks like our own unit's going to do more damage to us than the enemy, though it isn't killing any models. Alrighty, and with that, most of the enemy army already shattered extremely quick. Carl has also dropped down on the Goblin Great Shaman, and I'm sure he'll kill him with a few blows, especially with his armor sundered down to five and his melee and defense incomparable. One last unit still in the fray here, but completely surrounded by great swords from every direction. Yeah, really gotta be careful with the positioning of the uh, Hellstorm there. It was very concerning. I'm glad that it hit the Imperial foot and not something like the Borderman. And, oh, looks like the enemy lord's already running from Karl. A few of the enemy units are coming back, but those on the front lines are running. The Reichsguard are making sure that other units are not going to come back. Oh, here come some trolls. And Captain come down by the hammer of the witches at the same time. Karl's Deathclaw pouncing on the enemy lord, who should be done for as well. And it looks like he's not getting up from now on. And beautiful. <laughs> Just about to lift off. Uh, it looks like a gargoyle statue. We have uh, similar sort of statues in the... Uh, uh, in the Vampire Count's territories. But gargoyles and not... Uh, not death claws. You get pets now. Alrighty, there we go. A decisive victory for Carl. A lovely to see that Hellstorm rocket. And I'm hoping we can see more in this army and many other armies as well. Alrighty, not too bad at all. Nine units killed, or nine units lost, rather, and 710 kills on the Sunmaker. Absolutely devastating. And 76k damage. We're most likely going to replace the Hammer of the Witches in this particular army eventually with another, um, with another Hellstrom. They're just too good at clearing those massive infantry blobs out. And between two Hellstorm rockets and two units of Bordermen, the uh, blobs of infantry really just don't stand a chance. Then we'll just have to worry about these single entities, which Carl and future demigriffs, I'm sure, will be able to handle without too much trouble. Uh, got about a thousand prestige and two thousand gold for our fight. We're gonna occupy the place, and we're gonna hold on to it for now. All right, and ooh, hello, we got ourselves another trickster's shard. That's a nice find, actually. Hmm. What are you currently holding? You're currently holding a potion of toughness. You know what? I think you're gonna get the other trickster shard. Let's put this on you. Spell resistance minus 25%. You can float overhead before you drop a comet on an enemy. Love it. And actually, before I forget, we have an obsidian lodestone and another obsidian amulet, both of which are garbage and useless. And we're going to fuse those. Does anybody ever use these? Ever? I'm just out of curiosity. Like, I don't think I've ever... I'm just trying to remember any situation in any campaign I've ever run where I've any, ever used the uh, spell resist... Uh, bonus things. I feel like these need to be buffed double the amount to spell resistance 40 or something along those lines in order for them to be remotely usable. But generally speaking, your units are going to want ward save or physical resistance over spell resistance. It's too niche and it's unlikely for your units to actually get hit. If this was an aura, sure, then it would help your troops out, but not for a single unit. But anyway, I digress. Let's fuse those, see if we can't get something actually useful. And we got an Obsidian Blade, which is actually quite nice. Uh, plus 100 armor piercing. Granted, we're going to get all these uh, 
We're gonna get all the rune fangs, so it's not like we have a dearth of blades, but it's not a bad find. Alright. And then we can put the Potion of Toughness on you. You're gonna be in the melee as well, so you might as well have it. Uh, where are you, Potion of Toughness? Right here. Beautiful. And I'm sure we'll put a bunch of other things. You know what? Berserker Swords let's fuse you as well. Hey, another Helm of Discord. Oh, very nice. Uh, do we want to keep the Iron Curse icons? There's probably other stuff that we can fuse. And another Ogre Blade. I don't particularly care for the Ogre Blades, but maybe we can fuse those two Ogre Blades into something useful. The rest, I think, is useful enough so that we don't want to uh, delete it. The Iron Curse Icon is the only thing that tempts me, but for something that is going to be targeted a lot by enemy ranged, maybe we keep that. Oh, also you got your Hammer Up Sigmar buff. Nice. Very nice indeed. And in fact, it may be beneficial to, perhaps not now, but later on, give you uh, give you Dragon Tooth. In fact, I guess we could do this right now. Because it is the uh, hmm the buff for plus 25 melee attack. I'm just thinking whether this would be better in the Flagellant Army, though they already do have, have fairly high melee attack. Uh, yeah, A also wielding the Reichland Rune Fang while being uh, Carl's lieutenant does make sense. He just lends it to the Warrior Priest for battle. While he himself wields Galmaraz. Anyway, I digress. I just wanted a loreful justification for that. Uh, anyway, Gregor, and at least that way the Reichland Runefang stays in Carl's army. Really, Kurt Helborg, once again, should be a hero for Carl, but uh, uh, then he can wield the Reichland Runefang. Anyway, Gregor, are you move upwards towards Bordelow. Let's see what else we gotta do here. Uh, Wolfram Custerman. Now looks like McDelph and Galbarek has fallen, but unexpectedly not to Soland, but rather to Averland. I guess what Soland did was probably sack the place, and then Averland took it right after. Hmm, interesting. And they did not, in fact, take Akendorf. Well, well, well. Well, now I, I guess we do have to decide whether we attack these guys or not. I really don't like keeping an army still because it's 2.8k that we're paying per turn in order for them to just sit there and do nothing. Also, oh, hello. Well, 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 if it isn't a pile of Skaven outside a settlement, does that mean that they are willing to take a battle outside said settlement? I think it does. We're going to attack them right now. Uh, I was about to say turn on the research, but now we'll keep it off. Go for it. Oh, look, it's Orion. And they will be willing to fight. Oh, oh my. Oh my, they have... Whoa, okay, that's a little bit more concerning than I was expecting. Huh. Can we win this? Can we... Hmm. So the Skaven are quite problematic for this army to fight because their troops move just as fast or faster than our troops do. 47... 40. In fact, they do move faster, so run and gun doesn't work against these guys. But it's too tempting. It's just too tempting. We have to fight, damn it. <laughs> uh, I'm a sucker for good fights. Let's let's let, let's do this. This is gonna hurt. Valiant defeat, bad matchup, and I don't know how we're gonna bring down those Doom Flayers, but nonetheless. All right, no speech for Peter. I guess he wants to keep quiet as we're in a bit of a, uh, well, not quite an ambush here, but we did approach the enemy while Vanguard deployed and stalking and hidden after all. Now, it looks like this may be a dangerous fight. Well, no doubt about it. This is absolutely going to be a very dangerous fight, so we'll have to be extremely careful. And if we get badly hurt, it may actually be better to back off off of the map and then just fight the enemy again. Now, we're going to start this off by deploying forward obviously and immediately hosing down the enemy artillery piece with all of our huntsmen to destroy it so that it can't apply any of its uh, damage to us a really unfortunate positioning for that from the enemy in that regard but it looks like they basically spread out 
in this place. It's actually kind of an interesting setup here. They could probably defend this fairly well as they have three choke points essentially and like a pseudo minor settlement. If they could have held with this first army, they could have really made use of the second. Unfortunately for them, that doesn't look like it's going to be super likely right now and we can certainly take advantage of the pseudo choke point just as well as the enemy can. Or pseudo minor settlement, but non pseudo choke point. Alrighty, there we go. Looks like some storm vermin are rushing towards our ranks, but we're going to back off. These guys are, at the very least, relatively slow. And a few more shots into them will make sure that they run away. Ooh, and they get hit in the side by those handgunners who they didn't even bother trying to charge. I guess they wanted the Huntsman. And then, of course, as soon as they turn, their shield's no longer useful, and they'll get hit in the back by both our units and, by the looks of it, and our lord as well. Now, Black Lion, let's just take a quick look at you, since you're our new unit. Ooh, these things look fancy. Yeah, very nice. I like the color scheme. And I guess it is in many ways similar, but ah, uh, the uh, Hell Blaster's in there. Uh, this should be a pretty fun unit to screw around with, uh, though we shall see. Now we gotta advance forward as quickly as we possibly can. The Warplog Gisales are here, and they are going to need to be destroyed before the enemy can react to this. They are going to start firing, but we are firing on them at the same time, and they are extremely fragile and shouldn't be able to take too many shots. Now we have moved out our Pistoliers from where they were hidden, where they were deployed here and we're obviously going to just run around trying to peel as much of the enemy force away as we can. Now, the good thing about this is when not firing because they don't have a uh, snipe our huntsmen are actually not visible to the enemy so as soon as a unit routes or as soon as they stop firing the enemy doesn't or the AI by virtue of the way that it functions it doesn't realize how many units we actually have on this side which means we can make use of that while the uh, Every company militia are here in decent numbers, and speaking of decent numbers, here come the enemy. Damn, that's a lot of rats. <laughs> Alright, I am somewhat concerned, not gonna lie here, uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully our uh, our pistoliers can do a lot of work by peeling the enemy away, and we may have to just fight here. We're gonna take this choke point before the enemy gets here, and we'll see how much we can make use of it. Alrighty, well, everybody keep moving forward and firing. We're gonna have our, uh, uh, our war wagons all target those Doom Flayers, because that's the most dangerous unit that the enemy has here, and we don't really actually have a good way to stop them. And the best way to fight them would be to have the Pistoliers just annoy them for as long as they can. And that said, all of our Huntsmen and all of our War Wagons are going to target them. Alright, let's make this choke point work for us. And there we go, come on, explode those Doom Flayers. Looks like they're going to advance together with their infantry, which does make sense. It's a good way to buff up infantry by uh, popping the Doom players in there. It looks like the enemy will in fact reach our battle lines, though by the activation of Scurry Away, it looks like a lot of them are quite badly beat up. The Doom players are in fact already wavering and probably won't survive this much longer. But there's a few other decent units here, i.e. the Plague Monks and the Gutter Runners that we need to take care of. It seems like for whatever reason the AI has been and will continue ignoring these handgunners, which is just fine by us. Granted, it is a summoned unit, so we did kind of want them to take the damage for us, but on the other hand, might as well make good use of them. They can still do quite a lot of damage. If they actually fire. I think I had them target, uh, they were trying to target the, uh, uh, the Doom Flayers there, but then obviously once the Doom Flayers were in the middle of our battle line, they could no longer do so. And that's okay. They can hold that hill or continue to do so. Looks like the Plague Monks are in and they're doing a little bit of damage, but now we simply move to the sides with the uh, uh, with the units of Free Company that are not engaged and fire backwards into those Plague Monks, all while at the same time chasing the enemy as well. And there we go, handgunners firing, and it looks like the last of the Doom Monks... Doom Monks? Uh, Plague Monks are pretty much dead. Ooh, gotta be careful with getting our own units, though. All right, forward we go, chase the enemy down, and of course our Huntsman can fire while moving as well. Whatever the enemy is doing, uh, it looks like they've only sent about half of their army, well probably less than half, towards our main line here. Kind of a weird thing to do, but we're certainly going to take advantage of that as well. Granted, this means we can't make good use of the choke point, uh, but at least we can catch at least part of the enemy army and damage them. Looks like a very large 
portion of the enemy force is actually giving chase to all of our pistoliers, so they're paying for themselves time and time again with just this ability. And this is what I was talking about. We managed to peel away one of those Doom Flayers, and now they can't really do much. They're just a little bit slower than the uh, pistoliers, so as long as the skirmish doesn't break, and that should work in our favor. The enemy is also, by the looks of it, not protecting its reinforcements, and its second artillery piece is going to move onto the field over here, which means we're going to make use of that and kill it as well before it can do anything. Well, hopefully, before it can do anything. And there we go, gun them down as they run, and then we're going to charge forward with the free company as well, so that they can get into melee and uh, stop those leg claws in their tracks. Looks like some of the enemies are firing back and we're beginning a little bit of a range duel, i.e. the enemy uh, Skaven Slave Slingers versus our Huntsmen, though we are prioritizing killing those enemy Death Globes as they're just such a scary unit in general, and these Poison Wind Globadiers as well. So, ignoring the Skaven Slave Slingers, allowing them to hit us while going for the Death Globes. Fortunately, the Skaven Slave Singers don't do a lot of damage, but uh, with the relative lack of armor on the Huntsman and the Free Company, it's still fairly dangerous. On the bright side, this artillery piece looks like it can do nothing. It's stopped and it's stuck, and it's going to get killed by the Free Company. While our war wagons move through these woods to try to chase down those death globes to make sure that they don't come back, or those poison winds, the death globes over here dying. Our units of. Uh, Pistolier is still chased or being chased by piles of enemy units. <laughs> I honestly don't know what the enemy AI is doing anymore. It really, really wants these Pistoliers. Man, it's either that or it's trying to uh, consolidate its forces, but at this point, it doesn't seem like it's working out very well either way. And now that those Death Globes and Poison Winds are out, these... Poor Skaven Slave Slingers are stuck in a terrible position. We've taken the good uh, territory or the good terrain here that the enemy had started with and are now going to gun down the enemy slash arrow down the enemy a while they're below us. Enemy Glorious. Alright, and the Skaven Slave Slingers are going to start to run. Honestly, sometimes it's almost feels like a waste of ammunition to uh, go after the Skaven Slave Slingers, because hey, they'll come back and the Ooh, handgun is firing, very nice. Uh, and on top of that, we do have relatively limited ammunition. It's actually a great thing that we have three units of war wagons in this army, because that ammunition restock ability that they have is definitely going to come in handy. Ah, yeah, there we go. Hellblasters firing into the middle of the enemy formation. There we go. Ah, these two regiments of renown, as in this one and the Sunmaker. Fire again, please. There we go. Look at the little doors open and allow them to fire. Nice little, uh, nice little animation. And it looks like those clan rats that tried to charge up this choke point fail as well. <laughs> Why did the enemy give up this for this uh, position? It's such a good position. Well, it looks like the enemy. Well, uh, not all of them, mind you but a decent amount, most of them I should say, uh, are finally getting towards our, or moving towards the main portion of our army. This unit of Pistoliers has brought them here. The others have also split away. They've started to take a little bit of damage, uh, but not so bad so far. Now we're just going to reposition ourselves up on top of this hill and make use of this little, uh, uh, little cliffside here as a pseudo wall to hold ground. And there we go. There's still a lot of rats to kill, and in fact, the balance of power after all these deaths... Uh, I mean, there's 7.2k enemies on the field, or there were, but it's still in the enemy's favor, so we still have to be careful. I'm gonna set the enemy ablaze with an oil flask. Weakness to fire damage and speed reduction really quite nice at 21. They're gonna have a tough time moving up this hill. And our lord is also out front. Though this may not be a fighty lord, he does have the uh, Arun Fang, the Goblin Slayer, whatever it was called. And it does a very nice debuff. Let's just double check what the debuff is exactly, if I can ever select our lord here. Oh, come on. Game, why are you doing this to me? What did I do to deserve this? 
Nobody answer that. Uh, it is uh, Hawkland Runefang. So yeah, oh, it's Goblin Bane. Close enough. Uh, yeah, melee defense minus 25 and armor minus 75. Actually, the armor reduction is quite helpful for the Huntsman as well. So it's uh, quite useful to be able to get this unit into melee or sort of melee. Still going to back him off when needed. You hope that we don't have a battle wizard. We're working on it, game. Why you gotta remind me? Alrighty, well, the enemy is not in the best position as they try to move up here, try to reach our pistoliers who are now firing into their backs. Our free company, as well as our uh, handgunners, are also just around here waiting for the enemy to charge. But for now, we've popped that Hawkland rune fang and just to lower the enemy's defenses so that we can kill them, especially the. Uh, uh, especially the Storm Vermin and the Clan Rats and the enemy Warlord, who is currently being targeted by our... Uh, and by Well, not by the War Wagons, not by the Black Lions anymore. Or actually, no, still are. They still are, but not for long. But more importantly, the regular War Wagons, which are better as snipers rather than infantry killers. Otherwise, it looks like the enemy has actually split off another portion of its army and it's going to try to get around us here. Though a decent amount are still trying to chase off our uh, hand gunners, or pistoliers rather. And a couple are actually chasing these units of Free Company Militia, which we've separated out as well. What a, what a weird battle, I gotta say. But honestly, this particular army is uh, is probably going to get quite a lot of weird battles. And just by virtue of its mobility. And the fact that we don't want to be in a straight-up regular pitched battle. And there we go. Well, it looks like the Storm Vermin and the enemy... Uh, uh, and the enemy clan rats are having a pretty bad day here. The enemy warlord is just about ready to rout, having been sniped. Looks like our hand gunners are about to get into the melee as well, but they are reasonably armored so they can hold ground. And same thing, obviously, for our free company militia. Now that the debuff is gone, our lord is going to move away. We can only have him fight in melee for as long as that debuff is up. And we, have, we obviously want to preserve his HP, or at least to the degree that we can. Warlord is still leading the remnants of his clan rats and his uh, storm vermin in here, and it looks like we're getting a few stray shots from our own uh, uh, from our own war wagons, but if they snipe the warlord, it'll still be worthwhile. And gotta get additional morale shots into the enemy. More free company moving in that we're blocking uh, this side in order to try to protect us here, and we're also starting to run out of ammunition on our huntsmen as well. Gotta be careful. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, all those stray shots, though. There we go. That's a little bit better. And an Aerovakshi coming in as well. And let's see. Looks like, oh, that Aerovakshi actually did, in fact, delete the enemy warlord. Beautiful. Now we can switch the uh, various war wagons to the Master Assassin. And the enemy's still failing to get up this kill over the uh, Free Company Militia. And the handgunners are doing a pretty good job holding down melee as well. Very, very nice. Alrighty, you guys really need to turn around. They have a bad habit of turning away before uh, turning around and firing. There we go. Very nice fire right into the middle of those clan rats, and it looks like the enemy is just about ready to rout. Not the entire army, mind you, and just the units that were trying to make it up this hill, but all those arrows and bullets. You gotta love it. We might as well be playing a bullet rain game, or at least the Skaven might as well be. Away they go. They have no more fight in them, at least on this side of the map. We're going to try to assassinate that enemy, well, assassin, if we can. And a few of our units are also going to turn around and start attacking those Skaven Slave Slingers. Our Huntsmen are also going to get to restock from our War Wagons, and just to keep our ammo in a relatively decent shape. And we're finally moving away our Pistoliers on the other side of this map. Already a 12-minute long battle, I just want to point out. Damn. And we are kind of hurt at this point. I mean, we have been killing a lot of rats. The balance of power is now either perfectly even or actually very, very slightly in our favor. Enemies lost about 5,000 rats so far. And we have been trying our best to target some of the more elite rats as well. The Pistoliers have taken out the... Uh, uh, the... Warp Grinders and Storm Vermin and various other units that they could have. All the while trying to move away. 
and will continue to do so, though they are basically out of ammunition themselves. All right, over on this side, it looks like the clan rats have finally caught the Sterling's Revenge, which were operating essentially by themselves, well, together with a single unit of Free Company Militia. And they're going to have to get into it with a little bit of melee combat. Well, pseudo melee combat as they can fire while moving. Alrighty, there we go. Looks like those clan rats are in bad shape, and we're going to help out the Sterling's Revenge by uh, sending our second unit in, even though they still have ammunition, to help chase those rats away. A oh, lovely. And at this point, it looks like we've got a little bit of a reprieve as both armies reconsolidate. We're going to head up this hill so we can once again pop a restock on as many units as we can. Really, there we go. Got to get those ammunition stores back up and running from this ammunition train that we're paying for. Now we're moving away with our free companies and we are going to once again retake the choke point. We're going from choke point to choke point, and the enemy is not getting the choke points at all, and it looks like, in fact, it doesn't even want to fight anymore. They will, in fact, just plain shatter rather than fight us. I a little bit regret waiting for the ammunition on these guys, because we probably could have moved them forward and done more damage, but oh well. Uh, the, uh, the black lines here were doing a pretty good job in the meantime, focusing down those rattling guns, as we didn't want those to actually get in range. And it looks like the battle will be over shortly. We just have one unit of Plague Monks to kill, which are, of course, unbreakable. So we can watch the Black Lines go to work on them with those Hellblasters. And any extra units that move in as well. We got our other War Wagons coming in and sniping the enemy from the side. What a fun battle, though. Alrighty. Just gotta finish out this one unit. Keep firing. And this, this thing has a skirmish as well, so these guys can't catch it, they're too slow. This has got to be pretty enjoyable for the gunners, they know that they are under no threat here. And away we go while more units move in. We're going to keep the other units as best we can to actually chase down any critical enemy kills, like those rattling guns. We definitely don't want those coming back. The black line should be able to finish off this Plague Monk unit without any trouble themselves. And I think that was a shot from our Lord sniping one of those units, by the looks of it. All right, turn around and get another shot off. Let's see, and there we go. Just had to speed it up a little bit because, you know, can't be watching chasing forever. All right, come on, get another volley. No, gonna move away again? All right. All right, well, we've got some more units moving in. The Free Company were unfortunately just a little bit too slow to uh, get to the enemy units before they moved off field so they can help out and gun these guys down. Once again, this must be so frustrating, trying to run around and catch units. Only for them to fire at you. A little bit like fighting wood elves, which... Mm, <laughs> uh, is also frustrating. Especially because oftentimes you just want to watch some glorious melee combat. But this was fun. This was very fun. And that is the last of the enemy plague. Monks loses his head, which just kind of popped off by the looks of it. Those pistols are quite good at uh, not actually exploding things, but just dismembering enemies from a distance. Anyway, and there we go. A heroic victory. Obviously the auto-resolve gave us a... I want to say decisive defeat from this. Mm, but uh, yeah, the enemy absolutely screwed itself over with the terrain here. And the terrain was to our advantage, or at least it turned out to be to our advantage. Though it could have been to the enemy's advantage if they, if they, if they had done better. Oh. 
Ooh, all right, that certainly took some effort. Definitely one of the longer battles I fought, especially where field battles are concerned in recent times. We got 40k damage on those black lines, which is looking pretty good. The Pistoliers did fantastic, uh, just uh, leading away the army. And once again, I never before considered the value of uh, and the fact that the enemy seems to, by virtue of the fact that they can't see the Huntsman in stock, seems to chase away other units which allows us to just split the AI's army up and destroy it piecemeal, which makes absolute sense for this army, um, but also really, uh, really unfortunate for the AI. Yeah, damage wasn't too bad. Let us pardon captives, I guess, for the free cash. I take it this guy's gonna run far enough away that we can't attack him again. Yeah, would have been nice to destroy him fully in the field, but oh well. A rat catcher for Peter? I'd certainly like to think so after that. And a couple free items. No, uh, no student, unfortunately, but oh well. Uh, is Magritta walled settlement? Yes, indeed it is, and they do still have a full stack there to defend. I would be curious to see if we were to siege this. Hmm. Time to fight! If we were to siege this, I do have to wonder whether they would sally out. I'm almost certain that they would try to sally out again. They'd probably get Transform in here, and then they get Arkling in here, and then all together, and they would try it. In which case, it's probably better to destroy them in the field again, or rather than... Uh, I'd rather than take the siege. Granted, it looks like Orion's gonna grab Tobaro. He's an ally, right? Yeah, he is. He is. And we should be able to hopefully eventually trade that away from him. It's not like we need Skaven Blight. What if we take Skaven Blight and give it to him? Or something along those lines. We'll see. But unfortunately, we are very, very much out of time. And I'm going to have to call it here. Probably more rat catching to do next episode. And some more work sorting, I guess, as well for Carl, and maybe we'll attack some dwarfs at Akendorf as well, though whether that actually deserves a fight, we shall see. Anyway, stay tuned for more Empire, don't forget to leave a like and comment, all glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.